Hi, my name is Tom, and I'm an accredited exercise physiologist at ReadyMed. ReadyMed is a preferred medical and allied health partner to ETI, looking after all types of injuries and illnesses within our six clinic locations across the Perth metropolitan area. ReadyMed has been engaged by ETI as part of an injury prevention project to ensure all electrical apprentices remain safe within the workplace. ETI adopts a culture of care and is committed to ensuring safe work practices are abided by at all times to minimise the risk of injuries occurring. ETI are committed in ensuring all apprentices develop safe movement patterns at the commencement of their apprenticeship to ensure a long, safe and sustainable career as an electrician. ETI are uncompromising in their commitment to the health, safety and welfare of our people and the wider community. Do you know there are over 131,000 electricians currently employed in Australia? Body stressing is the most common type of work-related injury for electricians and 35% of all injuries being body stressing related. The most common manual handling or body stressing injuries for electricians include lower back and shoulder injuries. These injuries are caused by wear and tear to the joints, ligaments, muscles and intervertebral discs. Additionally, poor posture, repetitively picking up heavy items, not warming up or not planning a lift can also cause injuries. Techniques of reducing manual handling risk include but are not limited to using a step ladder to minimise overhead lifting or reaching, following the SMART technique when lifting, performing strength and flexibility exercises for the shoulders, hips and back. Maintaining muscular strength and conditioning will also reduce the risk of obvious injuries, along with maintaining a good posture at all times. The SMART model. S. Size up the load. This includes checking the load size, weight and stability, considering the distance and height of your destination, and deciding if a trolley or other assistance or mechanical aid is needed. M. Move close to the load. Stand as near to the load as possible and have your feet just outside shoulder width apart to allow for a strong base of support. A. Always bend at your knees. Get a firm grip and maintain a neutral spine as you bend. R. Raise the object. Use the strength in your legs, not in your back. Keep your head up and hold the load close to your body. Lift smoothly and steadily while breathing out at the same time. T. Turn by moving your feet. Make sure to pivot using your feet Turn the shoulders and hips together and avoid twisting or jerking movements. Then set the load down smoothly. Pre-start exercises and stretching is important to complete prior to the workday to actively warm up muscle groups and aid with injury prevention. It is also beneficial for mental preparation for work. Some risks of not doing pre-start include increased risk of injuries, including sprains, strains, muscular weakness, and stiffness. Most lifting from the ground involves components, replacement parts, or cable stands. Improper form may include excessive spinal flexion or extension, rounding of the back, holding loads away from the body, twisting the trunk when lifting, or fully flexing the hips and knees when squatting. Proper form includes using the SMART principles, sizing up the load, move close to the load, always bend at your knees, raise the object using your legs, and turn your body by moving your feet. Also, remember to remove any obstructions or clear a path, rotate tasks, or get assistance or use mechanical aids when required. Conduits are often lifted to shoulder height. Replacement components are often required to be lifted and fitted at shoulder height. Ladders are also often used at shoulder height. Proper form includes using the SMART principles, sizing the load, move close to the load, always bend at your knees, raise the object using your legs, and turn your body by moving your feet. For lifting conduit, you can utilize the tripod lifting technique. Put one foot next to the object, slowly lower onto one knee, Position the object close to the knee, grasp firmly with both hands, slide the object to, onto your knee and transfer to your shoulder, keeping the load close to your body and adjusting your hands to distribute the weight. Overhead lifting is often required during repair work or maintenance, including fittings and power outlets while using tools overhead. Use a step or stool when applicable to lessen the overhead lift. Avoid twisting or overreaching or leaning. Have both feet in contact with the ground or on the step, being a shoulder width apart. When raising objects, keep them close to the body and breathe out and keep your back straight. A pulling action is required for many jobs, including pulling cables through holes and around obstacles and pulling replacement parts and components into place to fit. Avoid excessive spinal flexion, rounding your shoulders and overreaching away from the body. Make sure to keep your elbows less than 90 degrees and bent throughout the movement and activate through your core with your shoulders relaxed. Keep your eyes and feet pointing in the same direction when pulling the object and use two hands 
and face towards the object to avoid twisting. A pushing action is required for many jobs. Pushing cables through holes and around obstacles, pushing trolleys and pushing components into place. Make sure to keep your elbows at 90 degrees if applicable and keep them bent throughout the movement. Staying close to the object, activate through your core and keep your shoulders relaxed. Keep your eyes and feet pointing in the same direction when moving the object. You may need to carry parts, tools, cables and components. This may require to be carried over uneven terrain or up and down steps, stairs and ramps. For a two-handed carry, don't carry a load that blocks your view. Hold the load as close to your body as possible, level with your belly button, and keep your shoulders in line with your hips as you move. You can change direction with your feet, leading with your hips. Use small steps and maintain a good grip with all fingers. You can use the pivot technique to turn with the load. For a one-handed carry, keep your back straight, push your buttocks out, and slowly lower yourself down to reach the object's handles. Lift upwards following your head and shoulders, and lift by extending your legs with your back straight, your buttocks out, and breathing out as you lift. Squatting can be used when working at low levels uh, or at ground level, often cho chosen to avoid direct pressure on your knees or in working in wet or very dirty environments. Keep your arms and the load close to your body, your back straight, engage your core, and keep the weight on the front of your feet. Maintain a good base of support for a stable position and keep both hands free to work. Kneeling is often used at low levels or at ground level. It's chosen in preference to stooping or squatting to reduce pressure on the back or knees. Keep your feet a shoulder width apart, as close to the area as possible that is too marked. Bend down with one knee as much as you are comfortable, resting your knee on the floor. Some tasks require reaching overhead. This includes installing parts, wiring, connecting components, circuit board work, and pulling cable through cable rack. Often reaching is required around obstacles also. Avoid reaching far from your body, keep upper arm elevation minimal, and apply forces in line with the vertical motion, either up or down. Try to avoid sustained overhead postures for an extended period of time. Remember to rest often and to rotate tasks on a regular basis. Many tasks require forward reaching, installing parts, wiring, connecting components, circuit board work to upper and lower areas. Often reaching is required around obstacles. Remove any obstacles that are in your way, avoid overreaching, and bring your body close to the object and work from a comfortable distance. Remember with tools to avoid holding strained positions, reduce excessive gripping force or pressure, and avoid extreme or awkward joint positions and limit vibration where possible. Also, try to employ the use of your non-dominant hand. Before performing a manual task, we ask you to follow the four Ps, pause, plan, posture, and perform. Pause and assess the task, plan the movement, ensure correct posture and technique, then perform the task safely. It is important to maintain physical fitness and conditioning to reduce the risk of injury, decrease the severity of an injury, reduce the prevalence of chronic disease, such as diabetes or heart disease, and help prevent re-injury in the future. All right, g'day everyone. My name is Theo Venter and I am ReadyMate's safety ambassador. Now, that's a big word, I understand that, but and uh, my affiliation with ReadyMed stems from about 14 years ago when I was involved in an accident or an incident at work. And the founder of ReadyMed, Dr. Han Newing, was the one that saved my arms. You see, a few years ago when I, on a Monday morning, went to work, I never knew that I might fight for my life at the end of that day because of a one decision, one choice I made that was just a convenient choice and not the right one. You see, on a 22,000 volt line, I was, was getting on an EWP working on this power line when I decided to take my own gloves off, my, my insulated work gloves off, just to get a little nut that was it was little sticky little nut. I needed to get this thing off and I decided that the, the the best thing for me at this moment would be to take my gloves off, remove my own insulated gloves. That mistake I made that day, that mistake had severe consequences on my life for many, many, many years after that. You see, the moment before I took my gloves off, I had this, this gut feel like something is gonna go wrong, but 
I override it and I thought, oh, well, I'm going to do it anyway. That's not so bad. And I wonder how many of you guys sitting right there listening to me right now have done this before. When I took my gloves off and I exposed myself to that 22,000 volts, there was a thousand 200 amps rushing through my arms from arm to arm. Now, if you know anything about amperage, less than 30 milliamps can kill you. 1,200 amps should have destroyed me and I'm one of the luckiest buggers to stand right here in front of you today and tell you my story so that you can now learn from this. You know what my dad always said, he said, you know, a clever man can learn from his mistakes, but a wise man can learn from everyone else's mistakes as well. I want you to take this video today, take it serious, everything you've seen and heard on this video, and let's stay safe for the rest of our lives. <laughs>